After this, hello everyone. Today, I'm going to discuss about bearing stress. After this lesson, you're expected to complete bearing stress and strain in machine part. So, bearing stress is a localized compressive stress at the surface of contact between two members in a machine part. These members are relatively at rest. So, there are a few examples or machine elements that that are subjected to bearing stress. One of these is an apple joint. So you can see an apple joint that this is an apple pin placed here. And the rods are subjected to tensile loads. So this area uh, is the is the area subjected to bearing stress is this length of this knuckle pin and the diameter. So typically this construction of the knuckle joint receives tensile load uh, both subjected in these, in these two parts. Another is the cut, cutter joints. So you can see here is a cutter pin that connects to uh, two rods and uh, this, this assembly receives two tensile loads at both rods. So our area of interest here is the area of the knuckle, uh, I mean the cutter. So this could be a, the width and the, the length of the cutter being placed between the two rods. And the most typical that we might be using more uh, in this subject is the riveted joints. So the riveted joints uh, joints to uh, plates uh, that uses rivet. So the the area of interest in the, with riveted joints is the diameter of the of the rivet and the and the length or the thickness of the of the plates. So let's consider a rivet joint that is subjected to a load P, as can be seen in this figure. Here we will see that the area of interest subjected to bearing stress is D times T. So where D is the diameter of the rivet and T is the thickness of the plate. Hence, bearing stress is defined by this equation. Uh, where the bearing stress represented by sigma sub b is equal to the force p over, over the product of d times t and n. Okay. So where the load p is the is the force applied force applied to the to the plates. For this is the load P is the tensile load. For D is the diameter of the rivet. T is the plate thickness and for more multiple number of rivets is the number of rivets per pitch length represented by the variable N. It may be noted that the local compression that is, which exists at the surface of contact between two members of each machine part that are in relative motion is called brain pressure. Okay, so this is what causes brain pressure, not the very stress. This term is commonly used in the design of a journal supported in a bearing, pins for levers, crank wheels, or clutch lining. So hence, we can see in this another figure as we can see, there are journal rotating and fixed bearing here. So the journal exerts a bearing pressure on the curved surface of the process immediately below it. So this is our journal and this is our, 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 this is our process. So these are the curved surfaces. The distribution of this bearing pressure will not be uniform. But it will be in accordance with the shape of the surface in contact and the formation characteristics of the two materials. So we can see here that, you that there will be no uniform distribution of bearing pressure and this can be seen in the cross-section of the process. 
And thus, the distribution of burning pressure will be similar to this, as can be shown in this figure B. Since the actual burning pressure is different and or difficult to determine, therefore, the average burning pressure is usually calculated by dividing the load to the projected area of record surfaces in contact. Thus, the average burning pressure for a general supporting and bearing is given by this equation. Because, yeah. So, in getting the the bearing pressure of this for this arrangement, and since the the distribution of bearing pressure is not uh, is not uniform throughout the area of this curved surface, in getting the the bearing pressure is is usually obtained by getting the average bearing pressure. And hence this equation, where this equation is obtained by the load, by the by load exerted by the uh, by the jor, uh, by the bearing to the journal over the length over the length of the journal contact with the bearing and the diameter. So we can see here that if we look into the perspective of the bearing. The area of interest is the length and the diameter. So we can see here that this length is uh, equivalent to the length of a rectangle. Okay. So let us consider this example problem. So there are two plates uh, of thickness 16 mm are joined by a double riveted lap joint, as shown in this figure. The rivets are 25 mm in diameter. It is required that we find the crushing stress induced between the plates and the rivet. If the maximum tensile load in the joint is 48 kN. Okay, so this is the figure. So these two plates are connected by double lap joint. So hence there are two rivets connecting the two plates here with thickness, the thickness of 16 mm and the diameters, the diameter of the limits are 25 mm and the application of load is in tensile manner hence the direction of the of the load applied to the to the two plates so we have uh, we have here given, given values, the thickness of the plates Yes, 16 mm. Diameter of the rivet is 25 mm, and the tensile load is 48 kN or 48,000 48, newtons. So we are required to uh, to get the crushing stress or the bearing stress in this between the plates and the rivets. Since the joint is double riveted. The strength of two rivets in bearing will be taken. Hence, we have uh, n is equal to 2. Okay. So remember that in the equation of getting the crushing stress or the bearing stress, we are to consider the number of rivets uh, in these uh, in, in the joints. So here it is important that we know that there are two. Uh, the two, two rivets, hence, this will be important in solving the equation stress. Thus, we will be using n equals 2. Okay. And the other value variables here, the, the d, t, and p are given thus. By substituting values, the crushing stress induced between the plates and the rivets is therefore, we substitute uh, 48,000 newtons to p and the 25 and 16 for diameter and thickness respectively and also the number of rivets represented by N2. Thus you get the crushing stress or the, the bearing stress 16 newton per meter squared where 60 or uh, newton per meter squared is equivalent to in megapascal. So we have the crushing stress or the maximum stress that will that will be induced between the place and the reverse is equal to 60 megapascal. So let's consider another example. 
So this is another example is a journal. So this is a journal uh, whose diameter is 25 mm, uh, supported in sliding bearings, has a maximum end reaction of 2,500 uh, newtons rather. Assuming an allowable bearing pressure of 5 newton per millimeter squared or 5 MPa, we are required to find the length of the sliding bearing. So in order to visualize this problem, we, uh, this is our this are a figure to represent this. So we have a journal of 25 mm diameter. So this uh, let's take this as the as the journal. So we have a sliding bearing. Uh, with end reaction of 2500 newtons. So we are required to find the length. So this is the length of the sliding bearing. So this is, is uh, subjecting a load of 2500 newtons to the journal. So we are required to find this length. Alright, so simply, uh, we, since we were given these values of diameter equal to 25 mm, a uh, load of 2500 newtons, and the allowable bearing pressure that can be withstood by the or can be withstood by the sliding bearing is 5 newton per meter squared. We can get the length of the bearing using the equation that I were given in the previous slides. Okay, so we will let. L, small l as the length of the sliding bearing in millimeter. And we get the projected area of the bearing. So in the unfolded arrangement, we know that the projected area that is subjected to bear, uh, bearing stress is equal to diameter times length. Alright? So, this is represented that the projected area A is equal to length times D, length of the bearing, and D, D is the diameter of the journal. So that's substituting the values, we get L times 25, or 25L is our, is our area. And thus we have our area of 35L millimeter squared. So the bearing pressure, the bearing pressure using the equation of bearing pressure uh, is equal to force applied over the projected area. We just substitute this 5 to the allowable bearing pressure of 5 MBA. We substitute and we have uh, the force P over uh, the projected area. So we just substitute these values. And we have 5 is equal to 2500. Yes, this given value 2500 newtons over the area, projected area of 25L meter squared. So we just have to get the value of uh, L here since uh, this can now be evaluated. So we get the length of uh, L is equal to 100 over 5. And thus the length is equal to 20 meters. All right. So that's all for now about bearing stress. In the next lecture, I'll be discussing about stress-strain diagram and and other properties of material and few more examples. All right. So that's all for now. Thank you, and see you in the next lecture.